geez, I went to bed with my hair all tied up and I guess it was, um, it's very floofy. I kind of like it though. Oh my God, that scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I'm recording this video in front of like my big window and the mailman just walked by that scared the shit out of me. Anyways, this video is a review slash reading experience for Come With Me by Ronald Malfi. First of all, I'd like to start by saying that Ronald Malfi is an author that I picked up, I think it was last year, I picked up his book December Park and I absolutely fell in love with it and ever since I've just been buying all of his books. This book was one that with one of my book clubs we decided to do a traveling book type of thing so everyone else got to read the book before I did and they annotated in it and the book has been beat up quite a bit so there are some pages that are actually like falling out of the book and this <laughs> corner got apparently attacked by one of the girl's dogs it's a very sticky book it has been through a lot and it's probably my favorite book that I own right now because of you know you can just tell it's been well read so yeah now the actual book and what it's about this I'm just gonna start off by saying that it was a very heavy book. It was not the kind of book that I picked up to have fun. It was the kind of book that I picked up because it had something to say and it was taking me somewhere. I feel like Ronald Malfi writes horror in a much more real sense, I guess. So I'm not a huge horror person, okay? I'm not, maybe I should start there. <laughs> I'm not a huge horror person. I don't really know what qualifies as horror, what different kinds of horror there are, but I do know that typically I understand horror as psychological, bloody, or um, paranormal, things like that, right? This book I felt like was maybe psychological, it was emotional. It was emotional horror. I think that's the best way I can describe it. So the main story is about Aaron who is married with his wife Allison and you start off just understanding that you know how he met her which was I believe like she was on a boat and then he asked her out or something like just you know kind of like a bunch of things that lined up for um fate to happen and then you move along some time they've been married for a few years several years and Allison gets shot in a random mall shooting. It was just some kid who was disturbed, had very rich parents with guns, took a gun, went to the mall, shot some people, and shot Allison in the head when Allison tried to like stop the boy. Now Aaron is obviously in experiencing grief. That's what happens when you lose someone. The chapter of what happened, how it went down, and how he experienced it was so heart-wrenching. I could feel myself experiencing the same thing he went through even though I've never lost someone like that. So that was extremely well written. Then we learned that his wife was investigating something. So her job was a reporter. She worked for like, I guess it was like a small journal, article, magazine, something. And she was mostly writing about young girls who needed protection or who, you know, ways to inspire young teenage girls to do something with their lives, to have hope, to achieve greatness, basically. So she was a hype woman for teenage girls, especially if they had a pretty bad, you know, background, something where their family may have been abusive or they experienced very intense traumas. But he found out his wife was investigating girl disappearances throughout the East Coast. So they happened in various places. Some of them were in New Jersey, South Carolina, Maryland, Pennsylvania. Mind you, they primarily live in Maryland. But so he found this stuff and he was like, oh, I wonder if she ever wrote something. She never wrote anything about it. And you're kind of just going through this story of Aaron trying to figure out what his wife was looking into. Like, what is it that she thinks these girls were being abused? Is it that he, that the wife was trying to help them? What was she doing? Was she interviewing people? Turns out that all these girls were murdered. It just takes a while for all of this to come to light. I mean, you kind of know what's going to happen. I'm definitely going to say this book is not so much of like a mystery. I mean, it is. You're trying to figure out who's murdering the girls. It's more, it's a journey. It's a journey of finding the truth, basically. And he's also dealing with his grief the whole time. People 
people are telling him that he won't let go of this research that his wife did because it's his only way of being connected to his wife. He thinks that his wife is not haunting the home, but like turning on the lights in the house and that he can talk to her through Alexa, like just things like that. So I do feel like there was kind of a paranormal element to this book as well. It's something that I feel like a lot of people have been through the same type of loss where you can't, you know, like you know what happened. You know who the shooter was. He killed himself after. There's no justice there. It was just a tragic loss, a tragic loss with no real, hi, can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you interested in reading this book? <laughs> So yeah, I just feel like it was very powerful on that end. It definitely delved into the line between what is obsession and inability to let go and how to process loss, things like that. So the girls have been murdered. They've all been murdered in the same way where their arms have been tied behind or their hands have been tied behind their back with like electrical wire or something and then they've been strangled and then thrown over into a river or a lake or some form of water and so it seems like they've been drowned. A lot of the information is not released to the public. A lot of it was never made known because no one could really truly figure it out. So sometimes some people were accused even though they weren't responsible. Like for example, the most recent one it was a pedophile who was, con he was accused of having murdered the girl because they found a sweater in the room, but it turns out the sweater was actually planted by cops because the cops just wanted to get rid of the case because cold cases, you know, they fucking exist everywhere. But Aaron is trying to connect all, or at least, you know, he's not trying to connect them. He's just trying to figure out what his wife was doing and he finds out that they are connected. There's something about this. So he keeps reaching out to people who were investigating these girl disappearances or murders or whatever uh, and he's trying to bring it all together right and ultimately trying to figure out why his wife went to this hotel on a certain weekend and didn't tell him so I'm skipping a lot of what happens in the book here you find out that his wife was from a very horrible background her mother was an alcoholic a drug addict and she had a boyfriend who was abusive who broke her leg and her sister was also just going in a a horrible direction and her sister was murdered in the same way that those other girls were. So Allison had told Erin that her sister had drowned and that she had died like that, which wasn't true. She was actually strangled and then made to look like she drowned like all these other girls. So basically Allison has been hunting her sister's killer the entire time and finding a whole bunch of other girls. And the other girls were discovered to have come from a camp, like a summer camp type of thing, where they were supposed to be, you know, pure or whatever. And then the killer was killing them because the girls weren't being pure and innocent and yeah, the usual. But the killer also is a victim of essentially like chemical uh, imbalance sort of. So in the town where Allison grew up, there's like a fat, it's a, it's one of those places that you would imagine, I forget what it was, but that story about the poisoned water in the US that happened, I totally forgot what town it was, but it's kind of the same thing where industry was so big, but people were starting to show symptoms of sickness. And so they had to shut down the factories and all that stuff. And this guy, the killer, is one of those people who began showing symptoms of mental disturbance. There were, people were having headaches. Some people were just getting weird because of what was happening in their brains due to chemicals. So this killer ended up having this weird perverse idea of how he needed to fix these girls or purify them or kill them because they were no longer pure. They were no longer following the teachings of the camp that they went at. So you find out that the uh, hotel that Allison went to the weekend not before she was shot, but like a few weekends before she was shot in the mall that she went to go confront the killer because he was the owner of that little hotel motel thing. And Aaron goes there and he ends up killing the guy. And the thing is, he knows he didn't do it out of self-defense. The guy was unarmed. He'd gotten him on his knees. It's just, there were these moments that were so freaking powerful because you know that if you've been through that loss, I, I don't know, the, the book was just so fucking heart-wrenching. It was incredibly done. And basically Aaron wants no credit for any of it because everyone's like, oh my gosh, you helped solve, you and your dead wife's journal helped solve all this stuff and you should get all this credit and all the people that he talked to to try and figure out about the girls and everything, they give him credit and they're like, you we're gonna give you some money off the, and he's like I don't I don't want any of it I don't want it and then the very very end of the book is the wife of the killer who so she had she owned the hotel with him or the motel came to Aaron's house and shot him
him, and you get a very paranormal understanding of maybe Allison really was there with Aaron the whole time. Yeah. I don't, th I know these are like big spoilers, but they're also kind of not because I do want people to read the books because the, the, the interpretation that the author put on a lot of the themes of grief and loss and believing that the people you love are still there with you was really incredible. The author's note at the end to added just an extra layer to this where it became more personal. So I'm not gonna say what the author says. I really think that this is a book that you should read and then read the author's note after. It was just incredible. So yeah, I highly recommend it. The only downside to it is my little little tab in here. I didn't give this book a full five stars. I gave it 4.5 because I do think it did drag at times. I do think that sometimes there was a little too much information on things that I don't think were really that vital to the story. It added to the ambiance. It added to the overall atmosphere of the story. It's like heavy weight that's supposed to sit on you the whole time, but I do think it was a little bit long at times. It is, I think, like almost 400 pages. It is 386 pages, so yeah, it's got some chunk to it, but that's it. That's all my thoughts on that. <laughs> if you've read this book, please let me know what your experience was with it, or if you DNF'd it too, what were your reasons to DNF it? And if you haven't read it, are you interested in reading it now that you watch this? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you didn't, that's your prerogative, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!